Hello everyone, our today's topic for the video is something which is very basic but yet very important for optometry when we say. So the topic for today is something which is called as forms of lenses. So before we go to forms of lenses, we need to understand what actually a lens is. So the first thing we'll go through is what is a lens. So when we say a lens, it is nothing but a transparent medium enclosing two surfaces in which any one could be curved. We all know that the refraction cannot happen if both these surfaces are plane. So what happens when one of these surfaces is curved that will lead to something called as refraction or bending of the rays. So if you see in this diagram, the one which is right now onto the screen, the ray of light will hit the first surface as it is a, what we say plane surface so it will not deviate but as it approaches the second surface which is curved it will lead to refraction as it is a convex one so it will lead to what we say as your convergence so it could be having one of the side as curved and the other be plane the second example it could be that both the surfaces are curved so whenever we have one side which is plane these are called as flat lenses whereas when both the sides are curved that is called as curved lenses so again if you see in the second diagram the ray the moment it hits the first surface it starts bending and again because of the second surface it will bend further leading to a particular amount of refraction so coming on to the lenses when we say there are two types of lenses the first is concave lens now what do i say concave lens is is simply that a lens which can lead to ray to diverge so when a ray of light hits a concave surface that will hit and it will diverge away from the center and why does it happens because there is a prismatic effect which we generally say so a concave lens is also an apex to apex prism and the ray of light will always deviates towards the base which is the thicker part now how do i understand if a lens is concave or convex so concave lenses are thinner at the center so if you see at the center it is quite thin so what we see here is a thin center whereas a thick periphery so here we can understand it is a concave lens also it is called as diverging lens why diverging lens because the ray of light hits the surface and it diverges away from the center so uh, the one one property which a concave lens generally has is minification so whenever you will see any object with uh, a concave lens and it will be seen as a minified image the next lens is something called as convex lens now what is a convex lens it is having one of the surfaces which bulges out so as in concave if you can see one of the surfaces coming in towards it so basically it is a concavity which is present whereas a convexity means that it is bulging outward so here if you see one of the surfaces is plane the other surface is bulging out so here what happens now this is actually a base to base prism so if i dissect it from here you'll find out that there are two prism which are base to base here so whenever a ray of light will hit this it will come towards the center that's why the another name for the convex lenses is a converging lens the ray of light will hit the surface and it will always bend towards the principal point which is a converging lens here one more a uh, property which a convex lens has is that it will magnify the image whenever you will see any object through a convex lens that will lead to the magnification of it okay so coming on to types of lenses now when i say types here i mean to say there are different types of lens which we generally see into our optometry so apart from concave and convex there is another type of lenses which are generally seen the first one is something which is called as a spherical lens now what is a spherical lens so this is an ideal lens which we see so here if you can see there are two meridias these are two meridias principal meridia which we call so when the lens has same power in both the meridias like for example in this case there is plus 2 in one meridia and plus 2 in the other meridia so what do i mean by this that all over the surface the power of the lens is same or rather a spherical okay the power will be same in all the direction and everywhere in this lens so it is called as a spherical lens which is a plus 2 diopter of spherical lens now the second type of lens which we generally see is something called as a cylindrical lens now what do i mean by the term cylindrical lenses 
whenever we see a cylinder you find out that one axis is straight and the other one is curved and because of that curve we get a number or rather a dioptric power onto that particular axis and the one which is straight or what we say parallel has no power which is giving rise to a cylindrical lens so here if you see there is power in one meridia which is plus two diopter whereas the other meridia is plano so here what happens that only at that particular axis you will find out that there is a power of plus 2 which is present whereas the other meridia which is called as the axis meridia there will be no power present so you will find out distortion in this kind of lenses so what happens in spherical lenses is that you will find either a magnification or minification but there will be no distortion but whereas there is a change in the power from one meridia to the other you will find out that in a particular meridia where the power is present you will see the magnification or minification whereas the other meridia where there is no power you will not see any magnification or minification something which leads to a distortion so this particular lens will be called as a cylindrical lens and the power will be plus 2 diopter and the axis will be 180 degree the third type is nothing but a combination of these two so when you combine these two particular power what you will get is simple that a plus 2 diopter in one axis and plus 4 diopter in the other axis so what happens here both the meridias are having two different power or else if we can see simply this meridia has plus 2 and a cylindrical of plus 2 is further added onto this meridia so what we get here is, is it is an addition of plus 2 diopter spherical with a plus 2 diopter of cylindrical lenses so what happens here is you get plus 2 diopter spherical with plus 2 diopter of cylinder at 90 degree so when you will see this lens so what you will find at this particular meridia you will have a power of plus 2 diopter spherical and when you further add into the spherical a plus 2 cylinder the total power becomes plus 4 into this axis so that that is how you get a spherical cylindrical lens because it is a combination of a spherical lens as well as a cylindrical lens so these are the types of lenses which we have into a normal trial set so these are the two lenses which you will find and when you combine these two together you will find out the spherical cylindrical lenses so the first type again i am repeating is spherical lenses the second is cylindrical lenses the third is spherical cylindrical lenses so now as we know all the types and forms of lenses we'll go on to the forms of concave and convex lenses now forms of lenses means actually the type or how you have created a particular power so as we understood in the first slide that it is basically the two surface combined together that will give you the total power of a lens so for a particular amount of power the power can be distributed in different ways in both the surfaces and because of the surface profile they are named onto that particular forms of lenses so how are they named in terms of convex when we say it is plano convex lens biconvex lens equiconvex lens convex meniscus lens and convex periscopic lens now what are all this we'll see in the further slides and in concave the same thing it is plano concave biconcave equiconcave concave meniscus and concave periscopic lens so what are these forms let's go on to this so when we say the term plano one of the surface will have a flat or rather no curvature into it because of which the other surface will contain the total power so what happens here if you see let's take an example of a plano convex lens of a plus 4 diopter so what happens if you see this lens one side is completely plane so the power or the profile of this a particular surface is plano and there will be no power into this surface which is called as a plano so now the total power of this plus 4 will be generated only onto the other side which is called as the convex side so that's why this lens will be called as a plano convex lens similarly when we see a plano concave lens now the term plano means one of the sides will be flat so one side is flat and the complete power is generated onto the other side which is minus 4 diopter will be onto the second surface so here one surface is your plano and the other surface is minus 4 so this is how we see a plano convex lens and this is how a plano concave lens is seen coming on to the next form of lenses which is called as the bi or simply biconvex or concave so bi means two which can be different so whenever we say the term bi that means two and here 
two are the surfaces so we have two surfaces for a lens so here we understand that the power can be unequally distributed onto both the surfaces so the first one is your biconvex let's take an example of a biconvex lens so what happens here if you see there is one surface which is lesser of curve and the other is more curved so what happens now this is not flat if it is not flat it will have some amount of power generated because of the curvature which could be uneven compared to the other surface so what happens here there is a plus one diopter of power generated on the front surface and the rest of the plus three is generated onto the second surface so the total power of this lens will be f1 plus f2 that is plus one plus three totally become as plus four the second example we see is the plano concave now what happens uh, sorry bi concave uh, so bi concave lens of a minus 4 diopter what will happen here is that a uh, a minus lens will have two different curvatures here the front curve if you see is lesser in nature the second one is more curved into it so what happens that the first surface will have minus 1 diopter and the second surface will have a minus 3 diopter of power so the total power will be here as minus 4 so coming on to the equi the term equi means same on both the sides earlier we saw that there is something called as biconcave and biconvex lenses now here equi means same so both the surface will have same amount of power distribution again taking an example of your four diopter so equi convex lens you will see here now both the surfaces are having same amount of curvature which is leading to both of them having equal distribution of power as plus two and plus two so when you add both of them together they will give you a power of total as plus four so here what we see is that both the surfaces are equally having a power distribution that's why the term equiconvex is given to them the next is an equiconcave again a minus four diopter example so what you see here is the equal distribution of the curvature leads to an equal power which is minus two and minus two diopter so what happens here the power is equally distributed on both the sides and you give a same curvature on front and back surface equally coming on to the next type which is your meniscus or meniscus whenever we say the term meniscus means curved so meniscus is nothing but whenever you put a water inside a test tube you will find out that the water is not flat it is rather having a particular curvature which is called as the meniscus so here when we say the term meniscus it simply means that there is a curvature in the front and the back surface now here to create that meniscus or that curvature what we do is we use a base curve of plus six or minus six now what is a base curve base curve means a particular lens will come with a, a pre uh, predetermined power in one of the surfaces which will lead to the generation of a particular curved lens now here what we do is for a convex lens we use a minus curvature or a minus 6 diopter of base curve and for a minus lens what we do is we use a plus 6 diopter of base curve so how it is actually done is so whenever for example i'm taking a convex meniscus lens of plus 4 diopter so let's say i'm taking a convex meniscus so here the base curve for the meniscus lens would be minus 6 so if you see a minus 6 is by default given into this lens so if i want to generate a power of plus 4 i need to generate plus 10 onto the front side because when i add these two this should go to plus 4 so when we see f1 plus f2 that is plus 10 minus 6 that will give you a power of plus 4 diopter so here for a convex meniscus what we did is we used a minus 6 diopter base curve so here what we get is a more curved lens is achieved here so these are generally used into frames which have a curvature now previously we saw there is something called as flat lenses which was your plano convex biconvex equiconvex those were more of a flatter or a straight lens now if for example you get a frame which is rather having more curvature or like sunglasses in that we need to fit lenses which are having a curvature so in that scenario what we do is we use a meniscus lens the second example for a concave meniscus as the power is minus what we do is we take a plus diopter base curve so what we'll do here is we'll take a plus six diopter base curve so now to generate minus four what we need to do is we need to grind an additional of minus 10 onto the back surface so now if you add f1 and f2 you will get that plus six and minus 10 will give you minus four okay 
So here how we get it? So simple, whenever there is a convex meniscus lens, the base curve is used as minus 6. Whenever there is a concave meniscus lens, the base curve will be used as plus 6 to generate the proper curvatures. Coming on to the last form of lens, that is your periscopic lenses. These are no more used into the regular practice. They were previously used. Uh, similar to the meniscus lenses, here the lenses are done with a base curve of plus 1.25 or a minus 1.25. So what will happen whenever there is a convex periscopic lens, now the term convex comes, so what we will do is we will use a base curve which is having a minus power, so minus 1.25 diopter is used, so to generate a lens with plus 4 diopter what I will do is I will generate plus 5.25 diopter onto the front surface which will give me the power that is equivalent to plus 4, so what happens plus 5.25 minus 1.25 will give you a power of plus 4 diopter. Coming on to the second one, that is a concave periscopic lens. So here, a minus 4 diopter, again, same example has been taken. So what I do is, here, I will take a plus base curve. Why? Because it is a concave periscopic lens. So what will happen? Plus 1.25 diopter will be taken as the base curve. And to generate the minus 4 diopter, I will be grinding the rest of the power onto the second surface, which is minus 5.25 diopter. So when I add 1 and 2, that is front surface and the back surface, the total power will go on to minus 4 diopter. So that is about all the form of lenses. The main question is, what is the use of all these forms of lenses? Because there are different types of frames and different requirement, so there should be availability of different forms of lenses. Now I have given you the example of 4 diopter in almost 5 different ways in plus 4 and 5 different ways in minus 4. So these all different types are used in different scenarios. Also most of these lenses come with an advantage or disadvantage. Like for example, if there is a plus 10 diopter lens, I cannot use a plano convex lens because the complete power will be onto one surface leading to a more thick lenses. So in such cases, an equiconvex would be more helpful because the power would be equally distributed. Whereas uh, your periscopic lenses are no more used. Meniscus lenses can be very helpful while doing prescriptions onto sunglasses because we require a particular amount of curvature whenever we want to dispense a particular lens or a particular uh, form of lens. So that is all for today's lecture. So I hope this was very helpful for you. For any doubts, please feel free to ask on the comment section. Thank you. And we'll be back soon with the new videos on further topics. Thank you.